Good morning everyone, uh, back at the unit today. It is a Sunday for us, this video will probably go up today. If not, I'll put it up in the week, possibly. It depends when I get around to editing it. Anyways, uh, we've been off to Derby today to collect some tyres, which you can see here. Uh, one of the biggest costs of drifting is tyres. Um, we luckily found a chap on Facebook which was giving away free tyres, so here we are, lots of tyres. Um, they're all 18s, uh, select sizes as well. I think they go from 225s up to 255s possibly, and then a range in the sidewall. A bit possibly different to what I might usually run, but because they're free, I mean, I'm not gonna say no. So we went and got all of them that he had, which I think I counted 35 tires altogether, which is more than I've ever bought or had or owned at any point, but we've got them now. It's only obviously possible because we got the unit. And look at that lovely motor over there. That's Craig's new machine. Uh, it literally picked that up yesterday. We'll go and have a look at that in a second. Um, let's go back to my face whilst I'm talking rather than you staring at tires if I can do that. Oh, I'm upside down on my screen. There we go, that's better. Um, yeah, so what was that, tires. Got them, there. I've got T-side coming up, but they're not gonna be used at T-side just because I, I kind of still learning T-side and the tyres I've been using, I kind of want to stick to the same tyres for now, just so I can not die on the big corner would be ideal. But I've already ordered tyres, so they'll be coming at some point in the week, hopefully. Um, but yeah, we'll jump to Craig's car, because that's quite exciting to look at, because it's something new. I really like these. I don't know what people's opinions are that are watching the video, but we'll, we'll check it out, because it's a Jap car, and we all love Jap cars on this channel, or at least I do, and the boys do. And we'll get Craig to give us a quick tour of the new whip. Oh, there's the BMW, by the way. That's up for sale if you want to buy it. Um, it's on Facebook. If you're Lucas Morgan, check it out. Yeah, kind of giving up with that. We'll talk about that at a later date, though. It's not important. Keep there. <laughs> yeah, just have to throw that in. <laughs> um, so here it is. It's a GS300. If you don't know which one this one is in terms of they come with different engines, this is the one with the, the NA2J GT. It's a GT in it. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. G -G -E. G -E, yeah. G -E, yeah. It's the T that's the turbo bit. My bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, these are automatic. It's the Ristos that come with a manual if you know too much about these or you don't, but now you do. Um, it's a barge as well, which you can obviously see. Uh, if Craig would like to show us the lovely inside, he can show us the interior. It's a very nice car. It's basically, if anyone ever saw my old Lexus I had, it's like an older version of my Lexus, which I find, I mean, I like older cars anyway, so this is lovely. You've got the cool cloth seats, which, do you say these are a bit harder to obtain? Yeah, hard, you don't tend to see many for sale. And they've got no poo stains on them, like... I think they're cloth, apparently they're not cloth, they're something else, because I've no idea what yeah. you call it, it's like, it's like velvet. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like a sofa, if you have like, if you have any old relatives and you go around the house and sit on their couch, this is probably the material it's made out of, because it's just so comfy, you sit on it, you're like, wow. Uh, yeah, there's the lovely automatic shifter, if you want to call it a shifter, it's, it's that. The dash is lovely, I mean there's no like awfulness on it or anything like that, it's a very well preserved car. One of the other things as well that Craig mentioned, it was, was the same owner for like 22 years or yeah, something. Yeah, same owner for 20, since it was bought it after, when well, it was one year old and owned it until I bought it yesterday. Which is very <laughs> impressive, so technically second owner or if his son counts as another owner, I don't really know if that would have transferred. Yeah. But it's been basically in a family since it was new, now Craig's got it. Which is amazing, like, this is, this is great, I mean, it's like a sofa in the back, isn't it? look at that, there's so much leg room, we all went out this in it yesterday, because he picked up yesterday, so we all got to uh, experience the whip together, and it was very nice, I mean, I had the chair all the way back, there's still loads of leg room in the back, I mean, you've got the bit that comes down, I've got to touch, I think, because my hands are dirty from the ties, but the middle bit comes down, you've got cup holders, it's just luxury, like, this is what you want. We're definitely maturing more because we like and appreciate vehicles that are a lot more comfortable <laughs> and you'd probably look at as a youth and go, that's a granddad car, I'm like, nah, so cool though, it's so big. I mean, that helped pull the tyres. Use this, the Mondo and the Ibiza. Okay, 11 in it, I think? Yeah, I think we had 11 tyres in this, which is it's quite impressive to be fair, and it's not ruined the interior, so it's, it's a big win. I'd be feeling really bad if that was the case. Uh, another thing to point out as well, they're RX-8 wheels, um, not standard ones, just that's why they're, they're thrown on it. I think Craig has plans to change it and do some bits to the car. I don't want to be going into that too much, it'll sort of happen as and when, and I'll update you guys as things progress. It looks so big with the doors open. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, we'll quickly show him the engine bay if that's yeah, alright, Craig, just because that's the thing I, when I first saw it, I was like, wow, we need to look at the engine. Obviously, it's standard, there's nothing done to it, but 
it's, it's, it's a 2J, so it's just, just cool to look at and appreciate. Usually the main reason that a lot of people will buy these cars is, yeah, 2JZ, no shit, wow. But it's pretty clean, like the strut towels aren't like falling to bits or anything. I'm assuming all the plastics are here for stuff. I don't know what they should look like, but it doesn't look like there's anything missing. It could be, but, and it runs really nice. The, 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 the mileage isn't too bad on either, is it? It's yeah, like it's 100 and 118,000, which really isn't that bad for, is it like 2,000 yeah, or something? Yeah, old I think that's quite good. I mean, the Monday has got, a lot more than that, and that's another car. But yeah, a lot of people buy these and rip them out, but one of the main things when Craig bought this is like, I'm not gonna rip the engine out, I'm gonna keep the car as a whole car, because there's a lot of people asking, oh, I'll buy it and I want the engine. But the guy was like, I don't really wanna do that. Which I understand, it's nice to keep a car as a car, as it was in the guy's family for a long time, so hopefully with a little bit of TLC from that's Craig. Some little bits that need tidying up. And then it'll look pretty. I mean, I don't mind it as it is, but it's also gonna look very cool with a little bit more additions I would say yeah. um, that's just a quick overview of the car without going into too much detail or any driving clips as such you'll get all that in the future but the car is fully bone stock so you'll get to see bits as and when time goes on uh, we're gonna go and grab some lunch and then we'll film some of the random bits when I test up some different wheels on it and stuff and just sort of messing around really I'll just sort of document my day I suppose so yeah we'll catch up with you guys in a bit once we've had a bite to eat and all that good stuff. So yeah, see you in a bit. Hi guys, we're filming from a little bit later on. We've had lunch and stuff. Craig and some of the other guys have been down. They have all since now gone. So it's just me. So I thought just a little bit of a vlog update. I was going to film some of the other little bits we're doing, but we weren't really up to too much apart from sort of tidying up and doing little stuff I'm going to show you. Uh, Craig was testing fitting some wheels on the GS, which were the wheels that are on the RX-7 currently. But I didn't really film any of that, it was kind of just more trial and error of stuff rather than actually doing it to put them on or anything like that. Um, the tyres are all sorted now, which is one of the main things I just wanted to show you guys. Um, as you can tell, there's a lot of them. We've had to rearrange slightly. If you remember what it looked like, the fridge was there. Um, and then this stuff was there. Um, they're all actually stacked in some sort of order, I'd like to say. These are two tyres at the bottom, they're not going to be used, they're just kind of more dumped there currently. They're Craig's, two of Craig's random wheels, and then his other Blitzer freestyle ones. Um, they're the 265s, you've got the slicks, and then you've just got the two rotor wheels, and then one of the spare wheels, which I've got one of them on the way, which are fresh. They're the green and purple wheels, uh, the rays, which you'll see there, they're 235s by 40s with a spare tire on the top. Um, think of what two tires for them, I can't actually remember now. Oh, so one's mounted on the purple one was fresh, and then one of the fresh ones mounted to the other purple one. So there's another set to run, so I'll have a set of them uh, on them, so I'll swap them and then them. Just sorry, this is just me thinking for the drift end, what I need to run. Then also we've got all these, which are all stacked in decent-ish order as well. Uh, so we've got 215 by 45 at the bottom. So it basically works, if you want to figure out how it works, the system from the sticker down is whatever that is. So then up to the next sticker, we've got the 255s by 35, so that's them all the way down to the next sticker, which is two of them and then so forth. You get the idea. I've basically done that just so I can look at them and go, what have I got, sort of thing. Um, they're all a little bit different to what I'd usually run. Obviously I usually run 235s by 40s, which we have some of those here, uh, Falcon and then a bit of a mix, which we've got four of them, so there's four of the same of what I'd usually run. But then we've got similar ones, so 235s by 45s, which we've got loads of them, which is only five bigger sidewall, which really isn't much different. Same with the 245s by 45s, just a little bit bigger as, again, but I mean, these are free, so I can't really complain too much, and the tread's actually pretty good on them. There's a bit of a variety of tyres, some I've labelled up, some I haven't, as you can see that one's got no label, it just has the tyre size, whereas these have got, got like Falcon on this one with some Michelin with my bad spelling, it doesn't matter anyway, um, and so forth. There's a lot of Falcon tyres, a lot of Eagle, uh, Eagle, Eagle, got Goodwood Eagle F1 tyres as well, which Craig says are good, I don't know personally because I kind of stick to Accelera tyres quite a lot just because they have good deals on them. Yeah, there's the tyres, enough of me rambling about that, but that is good, that should last me, I don't know, a good amount of time. Um, if I decide to do the Buxton event that's coming up soon, I can do it now, tyre-wise. All I do is pay entry fee and fuel and get in the car there, which isn't awful. 
about 150 for entry, I think, and then fuel. Uh, I don't actually know how much it costs to get to Buxton, but it's not awful. It's only about an hour away, so it's possibly doable if I want to do it. It all depends on how the Teesside Drift Day goes, because that's the one coming up in 7th of October, so whenever that is from now, not too far away. The main issue is the handbrake, if that's going to be functioning with my dodgy fix, I've done with it. If it is, then possibly I'll book into Buxton because it'd be quite a good weekend to get to camp as well, so it'd be quite nice, but we'll see until we get to there, I don't actually know. Um, another thing as well, Alex has finally done an addition to the unit. This is Alex with a Shrocker, if you don't know him by specific name or whatnot, but it's, you probably would have seen his car, maybe, if you watch my videos. Um, got a board, this was from his workplace. He's getting Hot Wheels on it, which is cool. If you didn't know, Alex is a big Hot Wheels fanboy, so he uh, collects a lot of Hot Wheels. This is like a very small amount of what he has. These are ones that he's happy to leave the house. He has a lot of expensive ones that he keeps at home and stuff. So he's probably not going to bring them here, which is understandable because it is like a workshop. So you don't really want to be bringing your super treasure hunts and your collectible. I don't know a lot about Hot Wheels, but he has special ones that you don't want to get wrecked. But even so, we've got some really cool ones in here, which I'll just do a quick scan just so you can have a look. He also sells them as well. If you are interested in buying Hot Wheels, then so it's one of them. If I can remember, I'll put like a the name of his Facebook page on so you can have a look through if seeing what he's selling. And if he hasn't got anything on there that you like, you can drop him a message and he'll most likely be able to source you whatever car you want or have a good go at doing it because he has a lot of them. Um, besides that, the fridge is now over there. Everything chair-wise kind of shuffled up a little bit. As you can see, I've kind of been hobbling around this. This is just like a... They have my broken ray at the bottom. Ray? It's not a ray. I wish it was a ray. A rotor wheels, my bad. I just stack them up and it's kind of like a table. Chairs. I just. little playing around with stuff and it's now there, which I don't actually mind. The Monday is kind of backed in further than what it should be it's because of hoovering out, but it's just so you know why that's so far back. Just trying to work out what's best for seating and stuff because I've left them shuffled about a little bit. Then just tidying up as such because everything's a bit of a mess. As always, it seems to just get a bit busy in here. Uh, more additions to said F1 McLaren shelf. We've got this lovely um, premium line McLaren, which Alex gave me, obviously, because he's a Hot Wheel man. And this one as well, which is just a normal Hot Wheel, but they're the same style of car. That one just comes with the rubbery size and obviously a different colour. And there's probably other things, I don't know, like different spoiler and they weigh a little bit different and that sort of thing. But as you can see, I've got a couple of McLarens now, which I don't know how this started because I've never been a massive McLaren person. Yeah, I like the car, I think they're really cool and they're quite unique. But I kind of just decided to get a few and then they just added up and up. So probably going to stick them to just that side. And we've got the lovely DeLorean in the middle. And then I'll do my Jap stuff on this side, which I've yet to bring down. I've got some at home, but I'm kind of a bit like, I like seeing them on my shelf at home. So maybe I'll get other ones for there, but Jap things. And then the, I found this today, I say found it, Craig's had these for a little bit uh, from the LZ Fest. We got these as well as the steering, yeah, steering wheel that I got signed. So I thought, just look cool above the shelf. That's Adam and Colette's signature with Dave and Josh's cars, which is a bit odd that it's their cars, but I guess it's because Colette drove that car and then obviously Adam is just above that. I'm guessing they just didn't have ones of their cars, so it's just above them, but it's cool. Besides that, nothing else has really changed. Um, it just kind of little bits change and stuff as and when. I don't really have necessary plans for anything. It just kind of happens when we get stuff like tyres. This was a very last minute thing. I saw it on Facebook pop up. I was like, hmm, where is this guy? If he's local, I'm going to get it. And I was like, wow, he's local. So now we have these, which makes me happy because tyres are very expensive. It's one of the big costs of drifting besides obviously getting there and fuel and whatnot, but that's the big thing. Like usual accelerators, the two, three, fives by forties. I'm trying to think how much they cost. Roughly about 65 pound a tire. Obviously more for slicks and obviously more for the bigger size. And we have a lot of size of tire. They're not necessarily the brand I would have ran, but they're not shit brands at the same time because we've got like Michelin tires, Falcon tires, Goodyear tires, there's other brands, I don't know which ones are all of them, but they're not that bad and they have decent tread, which is definitely good for Buxton because it shreds tires of Buxton. And then if I find a brand that's semi-decent, then I can use them for a little bit until I get through them and so forth. So yeah, I'm um, big happy. Um, 
Besides that though, nothing else has really changed. Uh, this video's kind of been a bit of a random vlog thing, but I just kind of wanted to get something out this weekend, last minute. Because uh, I was meant to be doing a video on this, uh, what was it call it? An OBD reader, which I've been sent out, which I only got it like midweek last week, so I've kind of, I say last week is in the week just gone, but kind of wanted to just test it out a bit more rather than doing like a, a just as like a forced review in a way. I just want to actually try it, give you like my honest opinion on that sort of thing. So I started doing like the intro to that, but then I'll film a proper, more thorough video for you guys. So that'll probably be Friday or next weekend you'll get that video. But something to look forward to. It's actually pretty good to be fair from my uh, first impressions with it. I've tried it on Craig's new car that he's got the GS and it can read all the codes on that. Uh, 350 it works as well and the Mondeo it works. Some cars it has more features than others. It depends on what software and stuff's logged onto the OBD reader but we'll get a more thorough sort of thing on that coming soon obviously. But yeah, um, nothing to be rambling anyway. Don't want to sort of bore you with me just talking about random stuff but yeah there's not physically too much going on at the moment just kind of tidying up moving stuff about it sounds a bit boring but it's it's good feeling when you've sorted stuff out and it looks nice because it gets a little bit messy sometimes because we are always here just sort of chilling or moving stuff about and whatnot and obviously making space for new things and so forth so yeah it's been good um hope to be to be no 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 i can't even speak crikey i need to go and get some dinner down me um, hopefully today's video has been right though. It's just a bit of a children really. Just updating you guys on what's going on if you're interested. Um, until next video on the probably the OBD reader, which should be good. Then after that, we're getting close to drifting day. So but yeah, that's what we're looking forward to. We're just building up for the drift day because that's what I'm here for. Possibly what you're here for as well because that's what we enjoy. Or I enjoy it. You possibly enjoy it as well. But yeah, sound. Enough for me anyway. Catch you later, guys.